we ended up going and staying with uh, with my grandmother. And she she told us, no, you can't have anybody from the church here. Like, don't have anybody from that church here. I don't want them here. They're not allowed to come here. Um, my husband agreed, and I agreed too. And I just said, you know, that's fine. I'll just find some other way to get together with the disciples that I need to get together with. That's fine. Um, I was determined that I was going to stay in this church. Um, and they were still calling me pretty much every day. I was still talking to them all the time. And my husband was getting very annoyed with me. He's like, why are you still talking to them? They, they're, they're trying to take our kids away from us. You can't keep talking to them like this. This is dangerous. And, um, my, uh, my husband got a good job working at, um, working as a trucker. And then, um, I was just kind of sitting around one day and my, my brother who was also in the studies at the time, uh, texted me and he goes, um, are you done with ICOC? And I kind of, I, I was sitting there and I kind of took a deep breath and I was like, I'm taking a break right now, but I have every intention of going back. I honestly thought that a disciple had sent him to talk to me because I hadn't been there in so long. And I was distancing myself a little bit. And it's like, I'm taking a break right now. And he goes, you need to be done. And I was like, okay, what happened? It's like, instead of, instead of hearing the, you know, you need to be done. I was like, okay, something happened. And, uh, I need to talk to him. And it turned out that he had seen somebody get disfellowshipped. And that was kind of weird for him. He was like, something's not right here because when a person is disfellowshipped, they're the whole congregation, even the family members are told you cannot talk to this person except about their repentance, about coming back. That's the only reason that you can talk to them. And this goes from married couples, parents, sisters, Everyone not allowed to talk to that person except to tell them that they need to get back into their studies. Um, so he had witnessed a disfellowship and it was, um, very jarring for him. And, uh, he said, dad's going to call you. And, um, I was like, okay, like whatever. I'll wait for that call. Um, and then he called and he told me, he told me about, um, a time when he had, he had uh, been in um, in a church like movie situation um, where you know like um, back then the, the the Christian movies were really only played in churches and um, it, this one was an ICOC church and uh, his mom had told him don't listen to anything that they say because um, they they're crazy people um, and I'm like, okay, that, that doesn't mean anything. I mean, she could be wrong. Right. Um, and he's like, do your research. Um, please do your research because this is, this is dangerous. And, um, I told him I would, and he didn't believe me. Honestly, I didn't believe me. Um, I sat there for a couple minutes staring at my disciple's name on my phone thinking I need to call her I need to call her and I need to talk to her but I decided I need to call her I need to talk to her she's gonna help me talk to my dad right and something in me just kind of said you told your dad you would do your research so do your research so I I went on Google and I typed in ICOC and um, Google's fabulous predictive text came up with ICOC cult. And um, it was like all the air had been sucked out of the room for a minute there. And I was, um, I was really afraid of what I was gonna find. And inevitably I found, um, I found 